to widen your focus from a narrow defensive protection of berries during harvest to being proactive, targeting the overall population and minimizing SWD in the landscape throughout the seasons. Let's begin with the winter season. Try to understand their behavior at different seasons. And an example here is looking at the winter. Leaves are dropping, light is reducing, temperatures are going down. In the Pacific Northwest, we're getting the precipitation. In Colorado, you may be getting snow. And post-harvest, you ask yourself, what are they doing? They're going into a diapause. They actually become this winter morph, very dark in body. When the temperatures are right, above, say, 48 degrees Fahrenheit, they start feeding and then return to the protected landscape. You'll find, in this case here, that this would be a prime time in the winter to identify where they're concentrated. And then they wake up in the spring, they're searching, feeding, still concentrated in that winter refuge. You need to start looking at and deciding on your monitor during trap and bait, what works for you? You wanna build traps or do you wanna buy them? What fits into your budget and time and objectives? Perhaps monitor activity in both crops, not only in the perimeter of your fields, but also in the crop. And watch that shift in abundance from one trap to the next. As the season changes, environmental conditions change, and its fruit starts ripening. I'm going to give you an example of what we saw in four years. Let's start. See this line here? You can see there's temperature here on the right side. Watch it as it, it starts going down. Majority of those flies, they hang in the protective tree habitat, which is green. Okay, these are just trap counts. Actually, thousands of trap counts. You could see as temperature starts going up, we're right around in here. It's starting to rise. Beautiful day yesterday. It's a little cloudy today. But you will see how they shift back into, they go over to the crop as it ripens. And then as the temperature goes down, you'll see that the shift goes back into the trees. Smart little guys. So we're trying to identify those points, at least in uh, Corvallis and Albany, Benton, Lynn, Lane, of when they're in the trees and when they're in the crop and trying to use and exploit that information. Let me show you what I'm thinking. We identify those hot spots. They're not distributed all over. They actually seem to be selecting. They're not random. They seem to be clumped. Where are SWD hanging? in the off season. Perhaps in riparian areas, they love moisture. Diversified protected areas from the wind and cold. Perhaps you have non-crop hosts. I'm gonna show you a list of some of those. They could be feeding, they could be laying eggs. In California, perhaps it's uh, citrus is the off season retreat. Not when citrus is on the tree, but after the citrus falls to the ground, and that is their main choice of feeding. They could be there for the pollen, nectar, honeydew, sap, protection, refuge, but know where they are. Flag those areas. Keep historical records of the fly counts. Determine the risk, are their numbers high, are they low? Do you have an ag consultant working for you? Know if they're higher than the previous years early because they will eventually build up. In the PNW and in Canada up in that area, we had higher numbers in traps in 2014 and 15 because we had a mild winter in comparison to 2011 and 12. That's good information. What else can you do in the winter? SWD, as I said earlier, loves moisture, as their name Drosophila implies. They're dew lovers. We get higher trap catch always in locations 
where there's high moisture or leaks. Discourage them by burying your irrigation tape and fixing these leaking lines. What about pruning? Open up the plant canopy. Remove those inside branches that can't be reached or picked. Opening up will expose berries to higher intensity of light and lower humidity that they desire. Trellis your plants. Give them support. Eliminate these excess canes and sprouts. They love hiding in there. They love that humidity. Increasing the air movement, decreasing humidity, decreasing the shade. They're not sun baskers. They love the thickness of the shade. Removing that non-picked foliage. Clear the access for equipment because you have less food drop. I would recommend that they mow these uh, rows. What about incorporating weed mats? Particularly in a blueberry system. You could see these black weed mats. They really will heat up and kill eggs and young larvae of fallen fruit. Perhaps raking them, crushing them, aborting them, desiccating some of those unwanted berries. There was work done in the Walton lab that they estimated greater than 50% reductions just by putting in these weed mats. Or figure out a means to clean up this fruit drop. More important, always have good strive for that good plant health and nutrition with good plant and health nutrition and the proper amount of vitamins you have fruit firmness it's a fitness advantage and pest resistance but unfortunately after all that work some will survive the winter and they'll escape the traps if you enjoyed this webinar and support this kind of work check out our website and consider supporting us for future such efforts